This meeting is being recorded. Okay, welcome everybody together. My name is Dan. I am co-moderator from Buffalo, uh, along with Gerald Bars from Dortmund. Welcome to the first of five Wunderbar Together series, uh, discussion series between the sister cities of Buffalo and Dortmund. Um, before I introduce the um, American panelists, I would like to just remind all of the native English speakers to speak clearly because uh, of course, uh, German is the first language and English is the second language of participants in Dortmund. Uh, we would like to thank the Auslandsgesellschaft DE, the International Institute in Dortmund, Germany for uh, organizing this panel series. And we want to thank everybody for joining us. So from Buffalo, we have uh, Joan McGuire, and John Kleinman, both former uh, host families for the Buffalo Dortmund Student Exchange Program, which is led by, directed by uh, Lynn Engler. We also have Greg Engler, president of the Buffalo Dortmund Sister City Committee. Laura Munson, director of admissions and enrollment at Buffalo Seminary. Uh, we're still waiting on Emerson Barr, I believe. He is the sister city liaison of the city of Buffalo. And we have Devon Patterson, youth organizer for Open Buffalo. Gerard? Yeah, and I can introduce the panelists in Dortmund. Though we are an open discussion, so everybody can participate who is interested, but we had invited from the city of Dortmund, uh, Mrs. Sauerwald and Mr. Zeuch, uh, both are working in the office uh, of the mayor for the international relations. And uh, we have Angelika von der Orsten, a former participant of the high school program in 2015. And Tim, we have seen already, who was also a participant in 2015. And I guess, yeah, we have it now all. Uh, so far, I can see. Uh, Louisa Schoenwald? Um, I went in 2019, so... Um, uh, okay, sorry, Louisa, I forgot. No, I did forget you. I have not a full... No problem, don't worry. It's not, don't take it personal. And I won't, don't uh, worry, thank you. So you have, man you have managed to participate in the program just the year before the pandemic has stopped everything, yeah. You were a lucky guy, yeah. Uh, I think in a, in a German stomach, a table of the regulars in a German pub, people come together and just talk to each other without uh, uh, order, without uh, uh, listing. It, it's a dialogue, a normal dialogue. And I want to encourage you to have another di a dialogue too. Dan and I will give you a... a few topics we can talk about, but please, uh, you can always con contribute yourself, but if you don't want to speak in, in a certain moment, unmute your microphone, that is better for our uh, 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 general transatlantic atmospheric uh, sound, uh, which can otherwise uh, be harmed. So, uh, Dan, you want to start or should I start with the first question? Uh, go ahead, Gerald. Okay, so for, for, for us, of course, the last one and a half years were a real challenge as well uh, in Europe as in America and actually in the whole world. And what are now the, or how did you experience this big challenge facing the partnership and uh, uh, the exchange. I had the feeling we, uh, we all miss the personal contact, the encounters, personal encounters, which are very important, but uh, we have developed also other kind of communication like the Zoom conference, which uh, uh, yeah, the pandemic brought to us the direct dialogue over the Atlantic in this form is also a kind of uh, uh, development in our relationship. Who wants to answer first uh, uh, on uh, the challenges of the pandemic for our partnership? Maybe I would 
ask first, uh, is Emerson Barr already here? No, not yet. Huh? Yeah, yeah, Emerson Barr is, is, is not here. Um, does anybody have any particular challenges in mind? Fabian? Um, no, not particular. I um, can say something uh, basically. Um, of, uh, of, uh, be um, between the uh, for the corona pandemic um i believe that um like gerald was saying so said um i believe that there's at least um, one good thing about it if you can say that with so many sick and dead people and people lost their jobs and so on but um, i think digitization has advanced very quickly as a result of corona um I think that helps for international work and for international racing um, to get in contact um, to, uh, to each other. Um, of course, the most important thing in international cooperation is still I find face to face meetings. Um, but I think as soon as uh, this is possible again, I think we can work together even better, um, virtual and in face-to-face, -face, um, which is because techn technical understanding, um, so I think has risen quickly out. Um, Sorry. So we lost Fabian. Maybe maybe anybody else has something to say about uh, how technology is going to change the face of city partnerships or what your experiences are. Not well, everybody at once. The, certainly the technology has definitely helped. Um, when uh, Angelica was one of the students who lived with us back in 2015, and since her visit, we've been able to see her in person every year since then, either in Buffalo or in Dortmund. And when the pandemic hit in 2020, that was the first year that you know broke the chain of being able to visit each other. But in the interim, we've had several Zoom calls together. Um, we communicate with her family and her and her brother via WhatsApp. And so that's really allowed us to stay in touch. And I think you know, utilizing the technology as much as possible so that we do remain in touch so that when the time comes that we can see each other again, um, you know, it's a good thing. But you wanted originally come to Dortmund last year, isn't it true? Uh, we, I came in 2019 with the 40th anniversary celebration yeah. of the partnership of Buffalo. And so that's how I got to see um, her and her family again. I came a few days earlier and um, stayed with them uh, before the official visit. And so that's what kept the, the chain going, which was a great visit, of course. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kleinman. Um, uh, another question, Gerald, I'd like to pose. So we have, we have so many programs that have been put on stop throughout this pandemic. So what are some of the challenges that we face getting these back on track, getting these, um, as we say, a running start going into the next year? because there's a lot of time to make up for many opportunities that students have not had to travel. And so what are, what are some of the things we have to do uh, in the next year to get back to the point we were before the pandemic? Does anybody have any comments? Um, yeah. if, I, if I can say something, yeah, we lost a lot of momentum last year. Um, we had a, a trip planned with 18 students for last July uh, that we were taking over to Dortmund. Um, and of course the whole fall program, everything was canceled. And so now we are slowly trying to get that back on track. We've been very lucky. We have a new high school that um, will be joining us and that's Canisius High School this year. Um, but some of our other schools are not doing it this year. Again, this train at a full stop and just trying to get it moving again. So hopefully next year we'll have all of our schools back in line. But back to what Fabian was saying with um, technology, it's been kind of interesting. We have nine students coming this year in August um, to stay in Buffalo for our four month program. And I see Amanda, I see you there. Um, so we do have, there's a new host mom right there. 
um, who will be a first time host. Um, oh, there, there, the girls that, yeah, that's going to be, you guys are going to have a blast. Um, so we've been doing a lot of things over Zoom. So this technology has helped me to meet all the families via Zoom to actually go to the meetings that we've had um, over in Dortmund with the new students and so they could meet me there, which we've never really tried before. It wasn't something that we did. It was always, okay, I'll meet you when you get off the plane. So that's been very, very helpful. But um, it's been slow going and we're gonna have to really almost recreate the wheel for a lot of our program for our high school program that we're going to start up again this summer and getting back in touch with families and stuff. So we're, we're moving forward, but it's, it's been a little more difficult than I had anticipated. That helps me. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, thank you for that. Now, what about at the municipal level? What about at the, the city level? Um, Devon, for example, you're a youth organizer, you're a facilitator for Open Buffalo. What are maybe some of the more official barriers that uh, may be faced when organizing uh, international programs? Fabian also. Uh, well, so far, this is my first official meeting with everybody, so it's nice to meet everyone. Um, I have uh, corresponded with Lynn a couple of times, but I guess the, the few challenges that I'm foreseeing is, I guess, the, the disconnect to be able to actually experience um, the country of Dortmund, or excuse me, the country of Germany and the city of Dortmund from our youth perspective. So we're going into the exchange and the relationship without, I guess, being able to, to visit, you know, um, the area and then vice versa, have the, the Dortmund youth actually attend as well. Um, Beyond that, I think the challenges within the city are just to organize nonetheless is kind of difficult because you obviously want to be COVID safe and respect everybody's boundaries and their own health without crossing any lines. So we've uh, had to overcome a lot of barriers as far as voter registration and civic engagement and find, uh, find ways around you know, staying home and engaging the community We've actually been handing out masks. We'll stand on the corner and give out, I think last year we gave out 5,000 to 10,000 masks to uh, individuals in the community. We signed up, I think a thousand people to register to vote last year. So um, even with the barriers that we face, we're still finding ways to overcome those obstacles and be successful in our own, own respects. Thank you, Devon. Um, that, that makes me think of, um, you know, the, the requirements, the necessity for groups to have been engaged, even though these programs were on stop. So what has the, what has the city of Dortmund, or for example, the Buffalo Dortmund Sister City Committee, what has been done to kind of keep these connections strong throughout the pandemic? Yeah, well, I can say for the Auslandsgesellschaft in Dortmund, for our uh, partner institution, that we just had uh, uh, the, the annual meeting of all members uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, all on Zoom again, uh, but uh, for, it was only a precautionary measure. We could have, meet, we could have met uh, face to face, but we decided to be still a bit cautious. But the finances and the uh, programs are have uh, survived the pandemic, and we can continue as we did in the recent years. And uh, the budget of the Auslandsgesellschaft for the exchange programs is still uh, uh, given as before, and we look forward to start soon again with the first uh, exchange program. Um, I'd like to add a few things as well uh, regarding that. I think um, our two cities are in a unique position right now. Um, Thomas Westphal, the new Oberbürgermeister within the past year, and possibly having the first female mayor of Buffalo, India Walton, um, is, is gonna be interesting. Um, I've, I don't know much about her, but what I've read so far, she's very community oriented. And um, I hope that as a committee with Buffalo Dorman, we can bring a new international perspective 
to City Hall. I mean, it's always been there, but um, the past, it, well, I should say not past, but the current administration uh, is, it hasn't been in tune with, with serious conversation with um, our partner cities, not only with Dortmund, but I think all the other sister cities that are involved that are part of the whole program. I mean, we have a very good liaison, Emerson Barr. I'm sorry he's not here today. Um, but more importantly, um, making that new connection. I know Oberbürgermeister Westfall is, is very eager. Um, in fact, up until a few weeks ago, um, there's the DAO Accelerate program or Accelerator program looking for startup companies in Buffalo who are versed in, in technology solutions. And what a great opportunity for companies or, or startup individuals in Buffalo to enter the German market with their ideas and thoughts on, on technology solutions. I mean, that's just one thing, but importantly, connecting these two cities together on a, a, an, an administrative level. Um, is, is key. Without it, we, we don't exist. Um, I mean, certainly we exist on the student standpoint. That's always been a given for 40 years, but um, we're, we're more than that. This program is more than just students. And that's where I'm hoping we can take this, this new approach with possibly a new administration in Buffalo and, and bring it back to what it once was when it first started when Mayor James Griffin uh, um, was actually in office, and uh, be honest, if you didn't know this, was the only mayor of Buffalo to ever visit Dortmund over the last 40 years. So it's not like there has been uh, an invitation never sent. Every year an invitation is sent to the administration in Buffalo. So um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed um, that there's change in the city of Buffalo and uh, we can move forward um, with, with our organizations, um, not only with students, but uh, with businesses, universities, and in other groups that would like to, to come, come along with us. Yeah, our major, uh, uh, Mr. Westphal has just participated in our membership assembly, and I can only underline what Greg has just mentioned. And I think Mrs. Sauerwald can, uh, or Mr. Zeus can also contribute to that and can underline or can uh, express uh, the, the expectations and the strategies of the city of Dortmund towards the, the, the partnership program. Yeah, I just can um, agree what, um, uh, what, what Greg was saying. Um, it's um, really necessary and important that the administrations on Buffalo and on Dortmund side um, has a, a, a good relation and is um, still working um, together. And um, I think that's the best practice uh, example um, for, for a good relation between the administrations. And um, I think it's our role for the city administrations of for the uh, sister city um, committee um, to make uh, a little bit playing um, in Germany, we say door opener um, to, to, for, for our mayors, um, Mayor Brown or Mayor Westphal, um, to, um, to make the, um, the relationship, um, 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 how do I say, how should I say? Um, that we, in Germany. <laughs> Okay, um, um, das immer weiter schmackhaft zu machen für unsere, für unsere Bürgermeister. Das, to make uh, it more tasty. <laughs> it's tasty, yes, okay. <laughs> I hope you uh, know what I mean. Uh, but it's necessary that the um, mayors uh, are standing, um, uh, standing uh, for these sorts to work together with, with the partner cities. Yes, so I can just agree with Greg and uh, what you um, are saying. I, I will add that um, in 2018, when Dortmund came to Buffalo to sign a continuation agreement of the 40, 40th anniversary partnership when uh, Oberbürgermeister Ciro was here, um, it was a great, gracious visit. Um, uh, with, I, I guess I had too many expectations um, for what I wanted to see. And um, uh, afterwards, after the dust settled, um, I feel the city could have done more, but I don't know if the interest was actually there. So as a committee, as we work together, um, I mean, we're all volunteers on this committee. Um, we do it because we have a passion for our sister city relationship with Dortmund, um, as well as on the student side, 
Lynn and I were both students back in the day. We we're a part of the same program. And, um, but we have to take it to a new level. Um, and, and that's where I hope bringing other organizations in um, uh, that can help us and provide new insight and ideas to help strengthen the partnership on, on many levels. And, and that's what I'm hoping this uh, conversation will create. Well, there's a lot of, there is a lot of um, talk within the context of incentivizing city, cities to increase partnerships, to build these partnerships, to strengthen these partnerships. Any ideas out there of, of what, of how these organizations may be able to, uh, you know, make it tasty uh, for the, the government, for city government? Any ideas? Young people well, have ideas, correct? Yeah? Yeah. Young people always have ideas, but it's, you're, you're right. And when, when we went in 2019, um, with with our with our group, our delegation, we also invited members of of, of, of business, and members of community organizations, um, and I mean the trip was paid for for these people, but we were shot down at every single level. So we really have to have some really unique dialogue and find the commonalities that that we all have with one another, and see how we can mirror this as 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 the future of our our partnership. Without it, we don't exist. Describe shot down, Greg. I'm not. Well, you know, I, I you know, I've had meetings with um, with business owners. I had meetings with uh, um, state and county and even city uh, people um, in the administration, inviting them uh, as as our guests to to attend what happened in 2019 in Dortmund. But there's no worries about language barriers. Um, I said we're here to support. We're here to make the introduction, um, but. It just wasn't any 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 interest, and in with I and mean, we're talking a year in advance as well, planning this all out. It wasn't just sprung on them at the last moment. So, I, I think um, continuing knocking on the doors, finding the commonality, finding those interested people, um, it, it, some it's got to it's got to break somewhere where someone's going to say, I, I really want to do this. I, I really want to go, um, and maybe even with Lynn's connection now with. Uh, uh, um, the, her, her new uh, connections in Buffalo. Maybe we can find people who would be interested to participate um, and see see what Dortmund has to offer. And, and it's all about learning from one another is really what it comes down to and um, finding finding our, our likenesses. Mm. Yeah. Um, that was that was I mean uh, with uh, make it tasty for the mayors. Um, and uh, I remember when I was uh, in 2018 in Buffalo, I um, uh, sister city um, committee organized a very very nice trip. Uh, I think it was very very uh, hard work for them. Um, we have had in this time a meeting with uh, with Mayor Brown. And when we was in City Hall, I have a small, um, a small, yeah, a small, small talk, a small talk with him. Um, and um, I say thank you that we can be here and for your invitation and a nice City Hall and um, also small talk. And um, then I said to him, uh, we have a small, a, a beautiful City Hall too. You have to come to us. Uh, we uh, want to invite you. And then he said to me, "Yes, no, uh, the Buffalo citizens don't like when uh, uh, when the mayor is out of Buffalo." So it was a sign for me. It's not so really maybe interested in international uh, relation or in the cooperation with Dortmund. Um, that was I mean with uh, make it tasty for the mayors. Um, the mayors want. To have results, they want to have uh, efforts for the city, um, and um, you can make it tasty uh, for them. Maybe with uh, such things, um, which is um, Greg said um, about maybe our do accelerate pro program. It was a program from our um, um, from our Wirtschaftsförderung. Um, uh, um, um, what was the name? So. Um, it, um, economic agency. Thank you, economic agency um, for companies in Dortmund that they can tell about uh, some problems they have and they need with, uh, solutions for it. And with this, um, there was uh, at, um, tenders to um, international startups. They have the solutions for it. 
And um, with this, we go to the partner cities, of course, Buffalo. And when you have in this um, result, we have a startup um, company who is going to Dortmund and then has the solutions for the problems of the company. Um, so that is a win-win situation for all. So I think that that's, um, could be possibilities um, to make it um, to make offers for the mayor for collab for collaboration. That was what I mean, yes. I think it's a challenge for networking and to offer good deals for both sides. Uh, and if we need uh, to, uh, if we really need to bring people together who uh, uh, have a win-win situation in their contacts and uh, get a good deal done. Eh? Selling. I think that, uh, I think that's what great. Hello? Um, I'm looking to deposit um, to the back. Uh, Dan, you can do She's on her phone, so people are on her, I think, or get rid of her. Yeah. Uh, I had a problem to understand it. I think her phone just clicked in, yeah. Okay, where were we again? I'm sorry, I apologize for the uh, interruption. So we're talking about incentivizing cities. Uh, Greg yeah. gave us a few ideas that were were tried out with the, the meetings of the two cities. Are there any future plans either from Dortmund or from Buffalo to start something new, to refresh? I would like I, I, to, uh, yeah. sorry. Please. I would like to think that now working with Open Buffalo and not just the, the private schools of Canisius or St. Joe's will be something new to help this relationship grow and be built. Uh, be built. Um, just from my own understanding, I know that there's a lot more diversity coming from Open Buffalo than there is from St. Joe's and Canisius, especially growing up here in Buffalo. So I think this is a, opening a door to a new relationship. Um, we just actually met with about seven or eight um, of the Dortmund youth this past Sunday with my youth group. And we just had a quick little meet and greet introduction, open dialogue. So I think it's gonna really help the future for when you know the, the Dortmund city, sister cities with Buffalo, ask other community organizations in Buffalo or reach out to other or, or community, excuse me, organizations in Dortmund to kind of you know expand our relationship and outreach. I think this is the start of something that could be really huge in the future. I, Devin, do you have also the impression that we have to restart our partnership from the bottom, not only from the top? Greg had proposed we need, or, or the Frank Zeuch has said also we need to make it more tasty for the, for the tops of the government, city governments. But uh, I also believe that uh, uh, young people who start to uh, uh, come close together and love each other. I mean, the country, the people, the cities and so on, they are the managers of the future. And if they have uh, stayed a while in uh, America and Buffalo, uh, the Germans, for instance, they will always be uh, interested and open to a new uh, 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 deals to new uh, activities. I, therefore, I would also ask the participants of the former programs of you think what did this kind of exchange have a lasting, a lasting impact of your life? Do you believe that uh, in the long run uh, you could imagine to uh, 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 open a branch in Buffalo, for instance, or to cooperate closely with uh, Buffalonians? 
Well, it's um, hard to say since it's only been five years. So sorry, Angelica. Um, no, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, it's only been five years since I've visited Buffalo, but I've kept in touch, and especially this last year, I've um, started to uh, have a lot of more, a lot more Zoom dates with Anna and Claire, um, Lynn's and Greg's daughters. And um, I think in general, I would say it has a very lasting effect um, on my future. And I could imagine keeping in contact and especially on the political side, um, stay in touch and I don't know, do something cooperative in the future for sure. Um, I definitely would say that it has had a lasting impact on me because we're still, I'm still in touch with my host family almost, I don't know, like several times a month um, and we send each other messages back and forth and it's been six years since I've been with them so it's crazy how how people who live so far away can can still be so close like on a um, on a relation level <laughs> and um, also I think it has really impacted me with my interests of what I study because I went into politics and sociology and um, in politics, I, I love doing projects or, or research papers about the US or about relationships between the US and Germany. So I, it has definitely impacted um, what I'm interested in. And it has also provided me with insight that people who haven't been to the US don't have like that, I think. Louisa, how about, do you have anything to say? Yeah, I also think that um, the whole uh, digitalization um, helps with keeping in touch uh, with everyone. Um, due to COVID, I wasn't able to see my family again um, because the pandemic just started after I went home. Um, but we still in touch and I think that's um, very valuable. And I'm, I'm very happy to be able to have uh, f other family um, on the other side of the ocean. And um, hopefully I will see them again. So I think it um, was a great um, thing. And um, it also um, give me, gave me another uh, perspective and what I want to do when I finished school. So when I graduated, um, I now want to study international management, um, what I didn't want to study uh, before because um, yeah, I just think um, working international um, is something really great and I would love to work with people from all over the world and that definitely comes from um, yeah, my four month program. Thank you, Louisa. And I just want to say that all three of you former participants, your English is fantastic. <laughs> and I mean that when I say that. So that's great. Um, I would actually like to hear maybe some impressions from host families um, about the program, um, what incentivized you to join in, and why you think these, why you think it's important that these programs be be carried on and even even uh, built upon and strengthened in the future. I'll I'll speak up finally. <laughs> um, uh, looking back over our now 12 years as, uh, yes, <laughs> 12 years since we met Dan and <laughs> sent our then little kid over to Dortmund. Um, it's been very, very enriching for our family to host a variety of participants, uh, to do the summer program, the fall program, to uh, then continue the relationships. And I think that's the, the strongest selling point for the program is that you welcome someone into your home for four weeks or four months, but they're yours forever, that you, you know, continue to watch them grow up. This morning, I got to get pictures from a gymnasium graduation in Dortmund of one of our kids, and I couldn't be prouder. Um, and also seeing that after their experience with us, the kids that we've hosted have a much different view of the world. They, uh, it's broader, it's more peaceful. It's, uh, you know, it used to be, I think, back when we started that kids would come because the shopping was so good in the US. 
And, you know, those kind of things have evened out, but w there's a real thirst from outside of this country to know what we are really like and to be able to just feed that interest one kid at a time is, is very satisfying. And watching that some of these kids are going to become leaders of tomorrow, either in Germany or internationally is, is really great. So we'll keep doing it as long as, you know, the Dortmunds keep sending us terrific kids. Uh, but one thing I would like to say is that it would not be nice to have uh, a way of sending our kids over for a little longer, that maybe some sort of schooling, some sort, you know, that experience to maybe get an appreciation for how challenging a German education can be. That would be something that maybe down the line could be developed a little more even exchange, especially on the high school level. So. Yeah, I think then the problem of the mutual uh, partnership is that uh, first the language barrier, more mm -hmm. German kids speak English than American kids speak German, uh, but also the, uh, yeah, uh, hesitation of many Americans to send their kids over the Atlantic so far away. Is it true or is it the wrong impression? I don't, I, I don't think that's the, the impression. I, I do agree about the language barrier, but as a student back in 1982, um, we were required to uh, maintain our German lessons at the Auslandsgesellschaft week daily for four weeks. Uh, we had a few breaks in between to go to Berlin and, uh, and, and, and things like that. But I mean, that's where I hope that maybe one day this program can step up and maybe offer that longer program through the Auslandsgesellschaft, um, through basic German lessons if needed. Um, and then they have an opportunity to use those lessons by, by participating in city events or walking around. There's so many things you can do, but um, it's, it, it has changed. It has changed a lot. And um, we are seeing um, a decline in the German language here in, in Buffalo. But um, I, I think if there's interest, if students are interested to participate, I would like to see Auslandsgesellschaft be the component uh, to allow them to stay longer so they can get a, a better feeling for what, what this is all about. Just to jump off of that, Greg, uh, Laura, I wanna ask you, you know, you've worked closely with students for years. What, what is it that, that American students are looking for, uh, you know, beyond a, a, a German beer that would incentivize them to participate in, in a longer stay in German? I do think that our students are interested in um, academics and in perhaps um, seeing what life would be like in a German school. Uh, definitely language uh, barrier is a problem. I did go to France for a while when I was a student and I actually was in a language school for a while, not a, not a full on gymnasium, but actually a language school. But we participated and lived with a family and participated in community events. So we sort of got around it at that point. Um, but I think really um, that American families are willing to send their, their students abroad for a short amount of time. They do really believe in cultural exchanges, I think more and more. And um, what would incentivize them? I probably a program that would perhaps be bilingual where they could receive some credit here in the US. And I, that's probably the biggest challenge, I would think. Um, I, I do wanna say one thing, Dan, and that is just how grateful we are to our sister city and to this program. And when Lynn contacted me, um, it was such a, such a moment of confidence and optimism that we were going to renew this relationship and continue together uh, the way it used to be before the pandemic. So we love this exchange. Our students gain so much friendship for life, just as the students here said, contacts, traveling back and forth. It's so important. And I, I'd be very happy to work with perhaps developing um, uh, some type of relationship with the school over there or, you know, participate in some way if we were able to do that for U.S. students. But I'm so happy when these wonderful students come and visit us. So 
Thank you. Heartfelt thanks. And there it is, wunderbar together, right? Um, so former former exchange students from Dortmund, uh, I assume that you're now at university level. Maybe you can tell me, are there programs that also offer English language courses? Sure. So you mean at university? Um, yeah. In the studies or? Um, well, at university in Germany, it is expected that you know enough English to um, read um, scientific literature um, in English because it's um, an important science language. Um, so most of my seminars have literature in English and then there are also seminars that are completely held in English um, because there are um, teachers who only speak English because they come from abroad. Um, but I don't know, um, you can take extra English classes, also stuff like business English at my university if you want to. Um, but in general, it is just expected that you are fluent enough to follow along um, in English if the teacher chooses to speak in English or write in English. Uh, we, we also then, we also have at the University of Dortmund a known department of Americanistic and uh, Professor Grunzweig has not only a few hundred German students studying America and American language, but also every year he has about 50 to 100 American students studying in Germany, in Dortmund, and um, most of them for just half a year, four or five months, but uh, this program exists already and uh, uh, could be used more often, in, in fact, yeah. Uh, during this program you just mentioned, I met a friend of mine who is actually staying here for two years now, or two and a half years. He, um, uh, every year he uh, renews his uh, student visa to stay here because he likes it here so much. <laughs> the beer, yeah. No, he likes it here <laughs> so much in general that he wants to stay here. <laughs> okay. So I think one of the biggest challenges, you know, just in, in working, doing the work that Lynn has, is, is currently doing, I think one of the biggest challenges is that it is voluntary uh, for the most part and that you can't really get too much from the city. Um, in terms of putting in the time or the research necessary to put together these programs. Uh, does, uh, for example, um, Bettina or Fabian, does the city of Dortmund offer assistance in putting together exchange programs which would bring students from the US to Germany? Is there, is there a program that might offer help Tina, I think you should say something to us. Or... Yes, uh, there's no uh, official program that we can offer as a city administration. We just can try to connect the people that are interested or the schools that are interested in building up a relationship. Um, and then we get in contact with the, um, with Emerson Barr or, or his colleagues um, to find out uh, a partner for them and to connect them. And we can help them a little financial uh, fee, but it's not, not that much. Uh, so we just can give them some advices and uh, to help them organizing and do some work for them. But there's no real program that we can offer. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have right. a question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm not sure if I should uh, uh, bring our discussion on another level because I, I just got, got a yeah. breaking, breaking news that President Biden has got a deal, a bipartisan deal for his infrastructure program in the United States. And uh, I mean, this is, uh, uh, yeah, 
Well, only a little aspect of the whole relationship, I, I guess, uh, bipartisanship is a very good thing also for good international relations for all of us. And the climate has changed. And uh, 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 therefore, my question, do you expect something to improve in our relationship also by the new administration now? Uh, you know what, uh, Gerald, uh, Devan was just about to uh, lay in a comment. Devan, go ahead. Okay. How much would it cost for American students to travel to Dortmund to do an exchange? Um, I can answer from 2019 prices because we were taking 19 students across. Um, what our program is called the summer program does is we take students uh, from Buffalo, they go and stay at host families in Dortmund. So there's no cost um, for food or, 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 or room or board. Um, and I believe it was a three and a half, right, Greg, three and a half weeks, three and a half week program. We go to Berlin, we stay in Dortmund, we do all kinds of activities. And I think the price, including the flight, came out to be right around 3000 so to kind of give you an idea and what we are trying to do and what Greg keeps saying with the Buffalo Dortmund committee is trying to find ways to um, uh, do fundraisers and things and do scholarships and be able to get students over who might not necessarily be able to afford it. And that's part of what we would, like I said, we were steamrolling ahead and full stop. We were doing our halfway at Oktoberfest parties. We were trying to start fundraising. So that's something that we're also working on to try to get um, any student who wants to go a chance an opportunity to go over there and not just the students who can you know whose parents can afford it or they can afford it so and lynn you also um did a program or at least have facilitate the program through the da vinci school in buffalo how did that what was that one that was through the city of dortmund okay Dortmund, that was that was dortmund and they had a scholarship program and they sent the whole class from Da Vinci High School for a week or 10 days over to Dortmund. And that was a special thing. I don't know, Fabian or, or Bettina, if you know more about that, that was maybe three or four years ago. That was for Dortmund, but that was three or four years ago that they did that, so. Okay. And, and that, that in itself, Dortmund um, is, I think gonna be a, a key connection between our two cities. If, if it's not on a corporate level or a, a level of education, then I think through a series of, of music and art is, is a great place to start. And um, I know, Dan, you had some ideas with other communities in Buffalo and Dortmund and trying to make connections as well and talking with Lynn. Um, it, it, with, without a catalyst of something, I think either Dortmund or, or a city festival, because this year we're having um, Stadtfest in Buffalo um, in, in July. That's the first of its kind. Um, and, and we're going to see how that continues as a, as a new event. But we're trying to get ways that are, are not regular ways, not, not ways where we have to call up a business and, or a, a group such as Rotary or, or something like that. We're trying to find new ways to make connections with new people. Um, and, and hopefully that, that will transpire later this year as we get back on our feet again. Thank you. So Gerald, the question yes. was uh, moving forward, correct? Yeah. Do we have better uh, opportunities now when the pandemic is over, a new administration is in office at yeah. Can that help us to strengthen our relationship to have again more exchange or uh, using all your ideas to even improve the exchange and uh, 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 connect more people, all, not only students and, and, and uh, on, a, on a high school or a college level, but also on a business level, on a cultural level, we haven't mentioned it all so far. Uh, on uh, yeah, on, on many different levels, a mutual exchange which can uh, bring us together and also make a deal for someone, uh, for for some people, uh, make it interesting or tasty as we have heard before. 
thirsty for tasty, Gerhard. Uh, do you mean um, do you mean um, more funding opportunities by the government? Well, I think in, in, in Germany, uh, uh, possibly Fabian and Bettina might uh, uh, contribute, contribute also something, but in Germany, we have some programs already, uh, uh, also public programs to uh, sponsor such kind of uh, exchange programs. Uh, even the Auslandsgesellschaft, our institution is uh, uh, hugely sponsored, supported by the city of Dortmund for their efforts. And uh, uh, na na naturally, we also have to rely also on private sponsorship as in, in the United States. I know the system in the United States is very much different uh, on, on, on charity and private donorships and so on. Uh, you have to rely much more than we here in Germany, but we also have uh, 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 people, companies, or, uh, or groups uh, uh, who might support in, in one way or the other such a program. Uh, Devon, is, is Open Buffalo, is that publicly funded? Uh, I think we get all of our funding through grants. Okay. So I don't think we have one, like a, a, a public source of funding. It's multiple sources of funding. Okay. Are those renewed every year with every project, or how are the how do those work? Depends on the project. So it, it we have um, like a, we renew a couple. So a civic engagement is like one of our primary things to do. So that renews each year if we stay on track with um, the demands and the guidelines, and then we reach out to, to other grants you know, that works along the same lines of either racial, economic, or ecological justice. Okay, so those are grants based on increasing with the goal of increasing in inclusivity, correct? Yes, sir. What it sounds like. Okay. okay. Great. Anybody else? It's not Friday yet, people. <laughs> if I can um, say something. Yeah, yeah um, I know we've been talking to Open Buffalo and everything. I don't know if everybody's in the know of what's happening. I know Joan does, the committee does, but um, I've been working with the American Council on Germany with a grant from uh, Wunderbar Together. Again, another one, and this is how Open Buffalo and the Buffalo Dortmund Committee kind of got together. So what Open Buffalo is doing, it's the um, mayoral youth forum. Um, and so it's the city of Buffalo with the city of Dortmund. There are also other cities involved, um, Charlotte and Krefeld and other sister cities throughout the United States and Germany. So this is going to be a six, what was it, about six months long, five, six, yeah, five months um, communication with youth between specifically Open Buffalo and Dortmund. Um, so we're very, very happy to have them on board. <laughs> I'm very, very happy to be talking to, you know, uh, people in Buffalo, what he was saying about, you know, always being at St. Joe's and Canisius, maybe we could start getting our um, students interested um, in other schools, you know, so. Great. Thank you, Lynn. Um, we have about seven minutes left. Uh, I'd like to open it up. Does anybody have any questions for, um, for Buffalo, Buffalonians or Germans uh, regarding what we discussed today, regarding uh, opportunities, uh, programs, any questions at all? Maybe also, maybe also some comments on this kind of format, what we, what we have done now the first time in this series of uh, uh, Wunderbar uh, together. Uh, so uh, I would I would be really curious uh, to hear also uh, a few comments what we can do better if that is a way we should talk on other subjects too or uh, do you expect more like a, 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 a little short impetus speech or something like that I don't know but I understand this is a kind of a round table of the regulars. What do you think here, uh, Viola? Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you. I think I, I really enjoyed uh, this format. It's been a long time since I was in Buffalo. So I was there in 2012. 
Um, and unfortunately, no one from my from my year uh, is here, but hopefully they can join next time. Um, and I was just wondering if you have any sort of, I don't know, reunion planned. I mean, um, it doesn't have to be like a big thing, but I personally know uh, I always enjoyed when we uh, back in the day had our uh, time together and uh, did all these fun adventures together. And I think it would be nice to talk to people from the following years or the years before, you know, just just get sort of a, a, a bit of a, a generational <laughs> perhaps um, meetup. Um, but yeah, I was just wondering if any uh, thing like that is in is planned or has ever been proposed. Yeah, maybe Dan can answer it because he worked for the International Exchange in Dortmund in the Auslands in Gesellschaft in former years. We had it sometimes, but uh, during the pandemic and the last years, uh, we have neglected this kind of uh, uh, reunions and come together again in, in a regular way. Do you know more, Dan? We actually, you know, we, yeah. You know, I'm not a. I haven't. I haven't organized a reunion. I think I had the program eight to fifteen. I had the program seven years, and I didn't organize. A reunion. Um, I, I I don't know if Lynn has. Lynn, have you since you took over the program? Well, oddly, only one reunion, um, and it's from 1981. So, oh. okay, 40 so, years. Ago. Yeah, so this year we're celebrating 30, 40, 40. Wait, is it 40? Oh, geez. Yeah. 40 years. Um, so we're trying to find the people who participated in 81. As far as other reunions, we really haven't done that, but I think it's a great idea. And that's something that we could possibly do um, at Dortmund, um, at that city festival um, and get people together, um, get a stand or a table or something. And as we move forward in Buffalo, we, we could try the same and get those families together. I know I always talk to the previous families. I'm always sending out information and things from our host families and stuff. But um, I, I don't know, I kind of tend to think that they get together like Tim. Tim, who was your favorite host family ever? You, um, from Dortmund side or your side? No, this no okay. pressure. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's you guys, obviously. <laughs> it was it was us. Okay. Yeah, anyway, sure. anyway, uh, no. So so that's something I wrote that down that we can you know possibly start that. But I'm thinking Dortmund off the top of my head would be a good place to start for the the Germans, and then something here that we could do. Why not Anchor Bar? Oh, why not? I know you it's know not a reunion, here. but you. I think former students uh, meet with the next group of students coming to Buffalo as a way of answering questions, as a way of what to, what inspired them to do this and, and, and why they're happy about the program. Maybe there are things that they, they didn't like about the program, but it's, it's a great way for um, helping new, new students coming to Buffalo with former students going to the Auslands Gesellschaft, meeting with those, those that fresh group coming here. And uh, we kind of do the same on our end um, when we're making an introduction of students going to Dortmund. So that's as far as it gets. And um, two weeks ago, I just found my 1982 list of names on my program. So I don't know, we have to hire a detective to try to find all those people, I think, so. Uh, Viola, think... were you speaking of a, a virtual uh, reunion? Well, yeah, just, right. uh... I, I'm, I don't really know. I mean, it would obviously depend on how the pandemic will develop. It's just, uh, I think, so when I was there in 2012, uh, I was one of the first five girls to go to Buffalo Seminary because that year we were 14 people and there just weren't enough families. So unfortunately, even though Buffalo Seminary was great, I never had that uh, whole, uh, you know, host family experience. So, and I am only really in contact with one friend from back in the day and she's moved to LA. So I really don't have that many connections to Buffalo anymore. And it would just be really nice to, I don't know, sort of revive memories, I guess, because I mean, it's gonna be nine years in a few months uh, oh since God. I've been there. Uh, it makes me feel really old to think about it. Uh, and I mean, I have a few friends that I'm still in, in touch with uh, that I went, uh, that went with me um, back then but just not all of them. Uh, and I remember we were such a like tight knit group. Uh, we got along so well. So it would just, I don't know, be nice to to see them again and also um, have some sort of, yeah, Buffalo themed uh, reunion and also get to know um, 
yeah, I don't know, Luisa, Tim, uh, Angelica, all the people that I didn't get to meet because they were uh, not the year after me. Okay, great. I, I think, think that's a great suggestion. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think really we, we should, uh, Dan, we should uh, hand it over to the uh, uh, active uh, uh, staff of the exchange program now that uh, they organize uh, a, a reunion of those who went last year and they can also invite the ones who go this year and the, 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 uh, the one group sees each other again and they can give advices or experiences, impressions to, the, to those who want to go uh, to uh, give them encouragement for the trip. Yeah. Yes, um, this, might be a, this might be a possibility. Our last... Can I say something to that? Yeah, Louisa, go ahead. Yeah, we, we actually already did that. So the people that are um, going this year, um, we talked to them. Because uh, in 2020, there was no exchange. So we were the last um, group that went. And um, therefore, we had like a little uh, Zoom uh, meeting. And um, they just ask questions. And we, give them, we gave them some tips. Um, so we did that. And um, the year before, when I went, um, the group before I did that also too. Um, did also. But um, I think what she meant is that um, every like all the people who ever like not ever but um who went in the last years um like just go together and share the memories from every year i think that was she was uh, recommending yeah louisa yeah. thank you and we do have our final topic of the wunderbar together series is uh typical german american cliches and intercultural communication maybe this is something we can think about for our uh, our final session, not guaranteed, of course, but it is two o'clock. I don't want to uh, keep anyone. I am going to uh, stop recording and uh, the room is open for 15 minutes for anybody else who would like to stay. And I would like to thank panelists and guests from, from Germany and from Buffalo for coming today. Um, it was very nice to see you and uh, we hope to have you back again soon. Yeah, on 28th of July, we have the next round table then. Wunderbar. Wunderbar. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Yeah.